Okay guys, it's time for the Magnificent Seven. And if you don't get the reference, look it up. Better yet, if you're quarantined, you might as well go ahead and watch the movie. It's awesome. While you're at it, also watch The Ten Commandments. Now we all love Charlton Heston, but the real star of The Ten Commandments is Yul Brynner, just like The Magnificent Seven. And we're talking about a cast of seriously cool dudes. I mean, James Coburn, Charles Bronson, and of course, the king of cool, Steve McQueen. When you look up cool in the dictionary, there's a picture of Steve McQueen. But if you look real close, there's a picture of Steve McQueen looking at a picture of Yul Brynner, because he's the king in that movie. And I don't mean just because the haircut. Let's get to our Magnificent Seven. We're talking about 700 horsepower LS combos. Boosted NA, we've got it all. So let's get going. In this video, we're gonna cover our 700 horsepower combinations. That's right, all of this started back in part one with 400, then we went to five, then we went to six. Now it's time for 700 horsepower. We've got 4.8 combinations, 5.3, 5.7, 6.0, 6.2, and seven liter stuff. In fact, some of our NA combinations go beyond seven liters. We've also got supercharged stuff. We've got turbo stuff. We've got it all. So let's take our a look. first combination is simultaneously going to be the coolest and most effective and also the most frustrating. So it is a 4.8. Well, technically it has a 4.8 crankshaft in it, but it's an, actually an LS3 block with the 4.8 crank. That's right. It's the 8,000 RPM like D-stroked LS that everybody loves. Unfortunately, <laughs> we put a very small cam in this thing. As a matter, matter of fact, for this test, we put a set of factory, uh, factory LS9 camshaft in it. It also had, oddly enough, uh, ported TFS uh, CNC ported LS3 heads on it, so it's kind of a strange combination. But equipped with this, and then we were going to add a turbo to it, which everybody wanted to do anyway. When I first posted that uh, the combination up on uh, in the video where we ran to 8,000 RPM, everybody said, "Hey, now you need to add boost." Well, here it is, but we've completely changed the combination, so everyone's going to freak out about it. But uh, in NA trim, our D-stroke combination produced 512 horsepower and 415 foot-pounds of torque. And here's what happened after we added boost. And remember, this is a 700 horsepower combination, so don't expect 1,500 horsepower. So we only ran about uh, seven or eight pounds on this. And it, we jumped up to 701 horsepower, so it picked up, um, you know, a good bit of power, a little, little, little under 200 horsepower. So our boost is probably around eight pounds. I'll, I'll go ahead and post the actual boost number, the peak boost number, because it changed. Unfortunately, I was running this with a manual boost controller, and we had a peak kind of in the middle, and then we had a little bit of a falling boost curve at the end. This was before we started running the electronic uh, boost controller. So it was just a manual one, and that's all it did. Here's our combination, and here's the turbo stuff. Our first of our many 700 horsepower combos are D-stroked LS with a little bit of boost. Let's take a look at our 5.3 liter combination was your kind of typical thing. This one actually had forged internals, but you wouldn't need that. You could do it with a stock bottom end from the, from the junkyard. But it had forged rods and pistons, stock crank, and stock block. It also had a set of trick flow 205 heads, but again, at this power level, at only 700 horsepower, it's really easy to do it just with a set of factory 706 heads. You don't really need all that. And this one actually also had a fast LSXR, LSXR intake manifold, but don't need that either at this power level. You can do it with a stock truck or a TBSS. It's just that that's what this combination had when we ran the test on it because we actually run a lot more power than this um, from this turbo, but this is only at the 700 horsepower level. But equipped with that uh, stage two turbo cam from Brian Tooley Racing and the fast intake and those trick flow heads, it made 442 horsepower and 411 or 12 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we add, this was a, an S475 turbo from Summit Racing and an air to water intercooler, but we were only running like eight and a half pounds though. And so equipped with that single turbo, 
Our combination produced 718 horsepower and 657 foot-pounds of torque. You can see we had some weird stuff going on down here. Um, I don't know if that was wastegate opening or I'd have to go back and look at the timing curve and kind of see what was going on there. But th th those were kind of weird steps. Maybe maybe the gates were opening and closing. We had a pair of uh, Turbo Smart F or 45 millimeter wastegates on it. We use it on a lot of stuff, most of our single turbo stuff, because we've got the factory truck manifolds feeding that dedicated Y pipe. But this kind of looks strange, but I'm sure we could straighten that out and you can take a look at there. It's so easy to make 700 or over 700 horsepower with the turbo stuff, this big single turbo. That S475 probably would support, you know, 900 or 1,000 horsepower on this combination. But here's our 700 horsepower 5.3 liter. Let's take a look at our next combination. After running our 5.3 liter turbo combination, it's time to step up to the 5.7 liter. And actually, we've stepped up quite a bit past 5.7 liters. This thing was actually a 468 cubic inch stroker, but it did start off with a 5.7 liter block, actually an LS6 block, an aluminum block, and we had it sleeved uh, with the dart and stuff. And the reason that we did that is because the sleeve length when we're running a big stroke, this one was a 4185 bore by a 4250 stroke. So the longer stroke causes problems with the short factory sleeve length. So burning the dart and sleeves, it helps the sleeve length and helps stability for the piston. So this combination actually had LS3 heads on it because we wanted a good enough cylinder head to feed that big one 4185 bore. It had a big healthy camshaft in it. I'll go ahead and put the cam specs in it. That was from Comp Cams. Basically a kind of a bottom of the page kind of cam. I think it was their biggest hydraulic roller that they offered at the time from the catalog. We also ran this with a mast, uh, their split CNC single plane intake, and a big uh, dominator, carburetor 1050 dominator. This is the power output of our 468 cubic inch strokers, also high compression, flat top piston, probably was close to 12 to 1. So it was doing pretty well. It made 760 horsepower, 761 horsepower. So it exceeded our 700 horsepower number by a considerable amount. It also made 645 foot-pounds of torque. And because it's LS3 headed, I thought that I would just show you this as comparison to a stock LS3, even though this is our 5.7 combination that we're using. But you can see it's a, you know, it's a huge change. I mean, this is, this is big power for a naturally aspirated motor. And it's 468 inches, 760 horsepower. That's a good amount of power, especially for an NA combination. So now let's take a look at our 6-liter combination. For our 6-liter combination, I actually chose an LS2 crate motor from GM. And we had upgraded the crate motor with a cam. This, this is way back when. So we used a Comp 275 cam. I'll put the cam specs up on here. But it's before they came out with a lot of their new stuff. So they only had a few selections back then. But we, we upgraded the camshaft, and then we also used a fast LSX intake manifold. Now, this was the original one that Wilson did with the smaller throttle opening. It wasn't their LSXR with 102 millimeter. This one had like a 78 or an 80 millimeter throttle opening, if I remember right. And we had, obviously, the matching throttle body and inch and three quarter long tube headers. But what we would be doing is adding a Vortex supercharger kit to this thing. So run NA, our cammed LS2 essentially with that fast intake manifold, made 491 horsepower and 484 foot-pounds of torque, kind of like uh, about what a <laughs> what an LS3, a factory LS3 does, but this was an LS2, this was the 6 liter with the 243 heads. So here's what happened after we installed our Vortec supercharger kit. Power output jumped to 710 horsepower, and peak torque was up to 610 foot-pounds of torque. As you can see, typical of kind of a centrifugal supercharger, we had power gains increased with RPM because the same thing that the boost did. And I'll go ahead and uh, put the peak boost up. As a matter of fact, I'll put the boost down low and at the top so you could see what the rising boost curve was. Now this this particular combination had a Vortec kit designed for an F-body Camaro. So this was an early kit. I think it was a V9G supercharger that we used on this on this LS2, but it worked good and had more than enough flow to support this power level. 
Now let's take a look at our 6.2 liter combination. For our 6.2 liter, we chose a factory LS3 crate motor from Gander Chevrolet, and we're going to add a supercharger to it. But we ran it with the factory, you know, in stock trim with the factory LS3 cam first, and we would add the supercharger with that cam, and then I'll show you a couple of cool cam upgrades that we made after that. But our factory LS3 crate motor run with long tube headers and the Holly management system, 495 horsepower, and this one made 491 foot pounds of torque. Here's what happened after we added our Kenny Bell twin screw. This one was a 2.8 liter twin screw, which could support way, you know, over a thousand horsepower, so that wasn't a problem. Here's our Kenny Bell supercharger. As you can see, I got a, you know, rising power curve. This one made 710 or 715 horsepower out of the top and made 617 horsepower. And I'll put the uh, peak boost up here so you guys can take a look at it, but it wasn't very high. It was probably around nine or 10 pounds, something like that. But here, this is run with the factory LS3 camshaft. So, which as we know is not ideal for this combination, not for the supercharger, although every cam is a boost cam. Here's what happened after we actually installed a boost cam, which this was the factory LS9 cam, and we kept the pulley the same and everything, same air fill, same timing. So here's the LS9 cam. So we picked up, you know, went from 708 to 736 there, so even, even a little bit higher, over 740 horsepower with that LS9 cam. But here's what happened when we did another cam upgrade, and this was the Stage 3 blower cam from Brian Tweed Racing. So again, even more power, so we picked up, uh, that was 765 versus 735 with the, um, or 736 with the LS9 cam versus 708 with the, <laughs> with the factory LS3 cam. So as you can see, the right camshaft in that combination does pick up quite a bit of power. And actually the boost dropped with that camshaft. Maybe I'll go ahead and show you the boost curves with those. But anyway, these are our 700 horsepower combinations. And as, as it turned out, we were making way over 700 horsepower. We were making 765 or 770. So now let's take a look at the big 7 liter combination. Because we'd run all the other factory displacements, 48, 53, 57, 60, and 62, I thought for the 700 horsepower level, I would also include a factory LS7 displacement. Although this particular motor only used the LS7 block, but it was uh, created, this actually came from the guys at Brian Tooley Racing. As a matter of fact, this came from Brian Tooley himself. And once again, <laughs> I told him that this couldn't do what he was saying it was going to do. And as the other times have happened in my in the past with him, it did exactly what he said it was going to do. And I, it, from now on, I just listened to him. But this particular one used an LS7 block, and he combined that with a 4250 stroke, and he built a 454 inch stroker out of this. Now, the reason that I told him that this wasn't going to make 700 horsepower, because it had a lot of things going against it. He said it would make 700 and it would do it on pump gas. But this thing had like 12 to one compression. It also had a cathedral port head and it had a fast intake manifold on it. All things that I thought were working against it to actually make that kind of power, especially on pump gas. But as it turned out, <laughs> Brian was right and I was definitely wrong. So this thing actually made 703 horsepower. Let's see here. I take that back, 705 horsepower. And if you look at the torque, I mean, this thing was over 600 foot-pounds from basically 4,200 all the way out to 6,100 RPM. And it had a peak torque of 624 foot-pounds. So this thing was pretty impressive. It had some cool tricks. This had a, a, a set of 245 heads on it, I think. 
Yeah, Trick Flow 245 heads. It was around 12 to 1. The cam was a 660 lift, 251, 266, and a 115. And the reason that it had such high lift is because it actually had an LS7 rocker on it on this 245 trick flow head. So Brian had to do some pretty cool things to get the rocker mounted in the right position to be able to use the factory LS7 rocker. It had the fast LSXR 102 millimeter throttle body. We put an inch and seven eighths headers on it and obviously it was uh, tuned to perfection. And once again, he told me what it would do and I told him it wouldn't and it ended up doing exactly what he said it did. So this was another awesome combination, an NA deal. As we saw before with the smaller motors, it's easy to get the 700 horsepower level with boost with a turbo or supercharger, any of the multiple superchargers. You could also get this with nitrous, but this was a cool NA combination. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about our 700 horsepower LS combinations? Did you like the big NA stuff? How about the supercharged stuff? Or do we all just like the turbos? I'm Richard Holder, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep those videos coming. Next time up, we're going to 800.